the Lord. I hope you guys can download the um, podcast at podbean.com slash Pastor Ron Wright. Or wherever you get your podcast, we are live there. Let me fix the volume here. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let's go into prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your truth. We thank you for your spirit. Father, strengthen us, Lord, as we walk in grace, Lord, walk in your mercy, walk in your kindness. Father, I pray for the world, Lord. I pray for America. I pray for Philadelphia, Lord. I pray for the body of Christ, Lord. I pray, Lord, that we would get close to you, empty ourselves out in this last and evil day that you may fill us up because you cannot fill that which is already full. You can only fill that which is empty, Lord. Let us empty ourselves of our pride, our egos, our selfishness, our desire to be right, our desire to rule over one another, our desire to walk in haughtiness, our desire to just walk in the spirit of pride, Lord. Let us empty ourselves out, Lord, as Jesus Christ is our example. He emptied himself out and made himself of no reputation, but took upon him the form of a servant being found in the fashion of man. He humbled himself and became obedient even unto death, the death of of the cross. So Father, we thank you so much for your grace, your mercy, and your kindness. Speak to us as we look into the perfect law of liberty, Lord, your word. Father, I pray for those that are listening that you would give them ears to hear, eyes to see, and a heart to perceive. Touch us now, Lord, as we look into your word. Open up our minds, Lord. Give us understanding, revelation of your word, that your word may change us. And not only that, Lord, but that we would have a soft spirit, a soft heart, and that we would practice everything that we take in tonight and read going forward, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, amen. God bless you guys. Thanks for joining. Um, We are in, let me get this set up. We're going to go right to the book of Luke. Thank you for joining also. I want to make that clear that you guys can download the audio of this podcast at pod bean b-e-a-n pod p-o-d pod bean dot com slash pastor ron Wright, and you can go to our youtube channel as well and find us there so you can download this to your device and listen to it later on if you will and also go to our youtube channel and pass around right, or you can find us at Abiding in Christ Ministries, and we are on TikTok, and we are on Instagram as well. Again, thanks again for joining us. Um, we are in the Philadelphia area, and if you are in Philly, please, please feel free to join us. We go out on the streets here in Philly. And we are a soul winning ministry. We are a soul winning ministry. Please join us because that's what we do. We build from the outside in. And that's what God has called us to do, to build from the outside in. In this last and evil day, God has called us to build his church. Okay, we are going to Luke chapter 19. Luke chapter 19. Luke chapter 19. And let's um, start at verse 1. Let me pull it up here in the Bible. Luke chapter 19. Verses 1 through 10. And again... This message tonight is for Christians and anybody that desire to be a Christian, anybody that desires to follow Jesus Christ. This message is for you. Um, We are living in a time that is very crucial. And it is time for us to get close to Jesus Christ, Um, going after titles and money and all of this stuff. 
it ain't gonna get it. That ain't gonna get you stronger. That's gonna make you look good on the out outside. Excuse me, but inwardly you will be weak. So we need to get closer to Jesus Christ in this last day. I mean, I don't know how much clearer I can put it, but let's go to the word of God. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray that the saints are edified. I pray, Lord, that most of all, I pray that Jesus Christ is glorified, that the saints is edified and that souls are saved. Lord, open up our hearts and minds. Give us wisdom from your word. Let us put it into practice, Lord. Let us not just be going through the motions of reading the word and going to church and not never changing, Lord, and always blaming others for why we are the way we are, Lord. But let us take full responsibility and accountability for ourselves and for our own spiritual growth, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, amen. God bless you guys. Thank you so much for joining the live Bible study. We are on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and TikTok. I'll give out those uh, social media addresses one more time before we go into the word. We are at podbean.com slash Pastor Ron Wright. If you go there, you can subscribe for free and you can download all of our messages. We will try, try our best to come on every Tuesday night at 835 Eastern time. Okay, let's get into the word. And so tonight, tonight's topic is called a better view of Jesus. A better view of Jesus. A better view of, this is something I've been meditating on for the last two or three weeks. A better view of Jesus. We all need a better view of Jesus. We can never see Jesus clear enough, so to speak, because we are infinite. I'm sorry, we are finite. He is infinite. We can never get a, a great, great view of Jesus, meaning we're always growing. We're always growing. We're talking about getting a better view of Jesus. We all need a better view of Jesus. Let's look at Luke chapter 19, verses 1 through 10. We're going to do a verse by verse study. And then we're going to get out of here, probably give you a few more announcements, and then we're going to get out of here. But we need a better view of Jesus. That's what this whole walk is about. That's what this whole thing is about, is about getting a better view of Jesus and getting close to Jesus. The closer we get to Jesus, the more sinful we realize that we are. The closer we get to Jesus, the more sinful we realize that we are. And I don't know about you. But I know when I go into prayer, me and my wife discussed this. I don't know who these people are. When you go into prayer, God show you everybody else but yourself. When I go into prayer, the first person that God shows me is me. What I need to change, what I need to fix, how I could have handled this differently, how, how I could have handled that better, how I could have handled this in a, in, a, in a different way. God shows me me first because I need a better view of Jesus. Luke chapter 19. Let's start at verse one. And Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. And behold, there was a man. Now, if you're on TikTok, I didn't change the, the subject, but I, I meant to change the subject to a better view of Jesus. Sorry about that. That's what we're talking about tonight. Luke chapter 19, one through 10. And as Jesus and Jesus entered and passed through Jericho and behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus. Now, Zacchaeus names mean pure, P-U-R-E, pure, right? Which is a, a, a contradiction because he was anything but pure. But when he met the pure one, oh, my goodness. But when he met the one who was pure and holy, that's why the scripture says, any man that has this hope in him purifies himself even as he is pure. Luke 19, verse 2. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was the chief among the publicans, and he was rich. Now, not only was he a tax collector, he was the chief of tax collectors. Now, the Jews hated these tax collectors because they sat at different parts in different uh, parts of the Roman Empire, and they collected taxes from their own countrymen. They worked for the enemy, the Roman government. We know how people view the IRS now. 
but they had a better, a harsh view of Roman tax collectors being subject to them. The Rome, the Jews were subject to Roman taxes. That's why Jesus, that's the only thing that Jesus spoke about when it came to politics. That's the only thing that Jesus talked about. Pay your taxes. That's it. He didn't get caught up in all the other political arguments and the political debates. He didn't get caught up in none of that. The only thing he said about politics is pay your taxes. Excuse me. So Zacchaeus, now as Jesus is walking through Jericho, right? Verse 3 says, and he, Zacchaeus, sought to see Jesus, who he was. Just his person. Just him, right? Not his skin color, not how he talked, not how tall he was, not his vocal inflections, just to see Jesus, who he was. Who is this Jesus that everybody's talking about? Who is this Jesus that when he passes through towns, there's a lot of commotion and a lot of people following him? Zacchaeus wanted to see who Jesus was was verse three and he sought to see jesus who he was and he could not two reasons why he couldn't get a good view of jesus because of the people it says for the press and because he was little of stature he was a small guy right he was a very small guy and there was a lot of people around a lot of times we can make a lot of excuses for why we can't get a better view of jesus we can make a lot of excuses for why we can't get a better view of Jesus. Zacchaeus had two excuses. He was short and a lot of people was around him. Those were his excuses, but he didn't let his limitations stop him from getting a better view of Jesus. And neither should we. We should never allow our limitations to stop us or people stop us or ourselves stop us from getting a better view of jesus and the bible says in verse four and he ran before and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him for he was to pass that way zacchaeus zacchaeus positioned himself to get closer to jesus and as a result we'll see later on that jesus drew closer to him the Bible says, draw near to God and he will draw near to you, right? And James, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Note, notice that Zacchaeus, notice that Zacchaeus didn't make any excuses about his obstacles. He made no excuses about oh, all these people around. I might as well go home. I might, I'm not going to seek Jesus. It's hard. It's too many people around. It's too crowded. And plus, I'm short. He had two obstacles, his height and the crowd. Even with these obstacles, he was able to get a better view of Jesus. He was able to put himself in a position to get a better view of Jesus. When we get a better view of Jesus, it changes us. It changes us. Also, also getting a better view of Jesus put him in a position to get closer to Jesus. We're going to talk about that in a minute. Getting a better view of Jesus, put him in a position to get closer to Jesus. So when we're trying to see who Jesus is, when we're seeking Jesus through fasting and praying and reading the word and also applying the word to our lives, we become more like Jesus. Because I said before early in the week, that reading the Bible and praying and fasting, that's not spiritual maturity. That's spiritual discipline. Reading the Bible, praying and fasting is not spiritual maturity. That's spiritual discipline. You're disciplining yourself. You're positioning yourself for spiritual maturity. Spiritual maturity is actually acting like Jesus in tough times, acting like Jesus in times of pressure, times of uh, chaos, times of drought times of famine time those desert times those tough times that's spiritual maturity when you actually get a chance to put into practice everything that you've put inside of you when you can flesh out who jesus is in tough situations that's spiritual maturity 
Look, be, watch this in verse, watch this what he says, what Jesus says. So in verse three, it says, and he sought to see Jesus, who he was, and could not for the press all of the people because he was a little, a little of stature. He was short. We went over that. And he ran before and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was to pass that way. Now, remember, he climbed up into the tree to get a better view of Jesus. And I don't care what you got to climb or what you got to put down or what you got to remove out of your life, whatever you got to do to get a better view of Jesus, do it. Because we're going to find out that because he climbed this tree, that tr the obstacle was the people and his stature, his size, his height. He used the tree to overcome those obstacles, right? There are things that God gives us and, and people that God put in our lives to help us to overcome obstacles. We just got to recognize it. He could have went home and said, no, I can't see Jesus. It's hard. I can't get closer to Jesus. I can't get a better view of Jesus. But he looked at that tree and said, hold on. If he's taking this route, the tree is hanging over the route that he's coming. I'm going to get up in that tree and he's going to notice me. I'm going to get up in that tree and Jesus is going to notice me. Watch this. And Jesus said to him, right? Verse 5. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up. See? See that? He looked up. Because this tree is overarching the route that Jesus is taking. Right? While well, everybody is trying to press into Jesus one way. Listen, there's more than one way to get close to Jesus. Everybody is taking the same route. Everybody pressing into him, right? They all trying to grab him, grab him, grab him. Zacchaeus said, I'm going airborne with this thing. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up, verse 5, and saw him and said to him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down for today. I must abide at your house. He's going to have dinner with him. He's going to go fellowship with him. And look at these are the people that Jesus went to fellowship with. When you got a when you got an attitude that you only want to be around those that are holy, those that are uh, righteous, those that are that you perceive to be close to God, that's a problem. Jesus said to Zacchaeus, tonight I must dine with you. That speaks of relationship. You see what I'm saying? That speaks of relationship. People usually eat dinner with someone they're close with. People usually eat dinner with someone they're trying to get to know. Relationships are built around dinner, marriages and friendships. Let's go out to eat, man. Let's meet up for lunch. Husband and wife going out to dinner. We haven't been out in a while. Let's go eat. Business relationships, client businesses, taking clients out to dinner. That speaks of relationships. When Jesus says, I must dine with you. Revelation says, he, he says, uh, he that opens the door, I will come in and sup with him and he with me. That speaks of relationship. But the fact that Zacchaeus has put himself in a, in a position to get a better view of Jesus is what opened up the door for a closer relationship with Jesus. You hear what I'm saying? If he never if he never put himself in a position to get a better view of Jesus, the door would have never been opened up for him to get a closer relationship with Jesus. And that's what I say to Christians tonight. Put yourself in a position so you can get a better view of Jesus. No excuses. Zacchaeus could have went home. Zacchaeus could have left and said, man, I'm just a short man. There's no way I'm going to be able to get close to Jesus. There's no way I'm going to be able to see Jesus. All of these tall people around me, man, I'm just going home. But he didn't let his obstacles stop him from getting a better view of Jesus. What is in your life that's stopping you from getting a better view of Jesus? What is stopping you from getting a better view of Jesus? Zacchaeus line himself up in the direction that Jesus was going. Look at verse four. 
this is all strategic. And he ran before and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him. Look at this part now. For he was to pass that way. Zacchaeus lined himself up purposely in the direction that Jesus was going. What does that tell me? Whatever direction Jesus is going, we should be going in that direction. Zacchaeus got up into that tree and he said, okay, the route is this way. So let me go over and hang over this branch. That way I'm hanging right in the same direction that Jesus is going. I'm in that direction. He's going to see me. And the scripture says he looked up <laughs> and saw him. But what if what if Zacchaeus would, was never in a position to get a better view of Jesus? What if he would have let his obstacles stop him? What if he would have not uh, calculated the route? What if he would have let the people uh, distract him? What if he let the, the, the people dissuade him? What if he, what if he would have let his height distract him? His obstacles didn't distract him. He put himself in the direction that Jesus was going. And as a result, Jesus looked up and said, Zacchaeus, get down here. Tonight, tonight I must dine with you. Now, now, now remember that Jesus knows all things. He's omniscient. He knows what's in the heart of man. Jesus knew what Zacchaeus was doing. Jesus knows the people that's reaching out for the wrong reasons, like the lady with the issue of blood. All of the people was out there for the press. It was a lot of people. Uh, Jesus stopped and said, who touched me? Whenever you see Jesus stop, there's a desperation. He stopped and looked up and saw Zacchaeus. The lady was reaching out to him. He stopped, right? And say, who touched me? The disciple says, Master, there's a lot of people out here touching you. No, there's a different kind of touch when there's a desperation, when there's a true reach. When, they, when people are reaching for God for the right reasons, all of those people were reaching for the wrong reasons. And God knows. God knows our hearts. He knows our intentions. Also, the blind man on the way, on, on this same route, the blind man was begging. What is all the, the blind man was like, what is all this noise? They said, Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. He said, Jesus, have mercy on me. They tried to shut the blind man up. And then he yelled the more. And then the Bible says, and Jesus stood. See, whenever you can stop this, there's not too many people in scriptures that can stop Jesus and his strategic tracks. Zacchaeus, he got him to look up and stop. The blind man, he got him to stop. The woman with the issue of blood got Jesus to stop. Can you imagine getting God to stop what he's doing to, to, to pay attention to you? Lord have mercy. Glory to Jesus. Well, when we, we got to put ourselves in a better position to get a better view of Jesus. Zacchaeus put himself right in the place where Jesus could see him. Notice it says in, in verse 5 that Jesus looked up. That tells me that it is important that we are in the place that get, gets God's attention. What is that place? Primarily, what gets God's attention? Faith and humility. It is impossible to please God, for he that comes in must believe that he is, and a reward of them that diligently seek him. Humility. Thus saith the high and lofty one, I dwell with those that are humble spirit and a contrite heart. Those are the ones that God dwell with. He that exalts himself shall be brought low. He that brings himself low shall be exalted. God resists the proud, but what? Gives grace to the humble. You got to put yourself in a place, in a position to get God's attention. It is important that we are in that place that get God's attention. For Zacchaeus, that, that, that place was that sycamore tree. It was a physical place. But for us, it's a spiritual place that we must put ourselves in position to get God's attention. That place is usually, like we said, consistent prayer, a consistent prayer life, studying the word, practicing humility and walking in love. Look at verse six now. After Jesus Christ told him to come down for I must dine with you. Look what verse six says. And he made haste Zacchaeus got out of the tree and came down and received him joyfully that's what we need to do as christians we need to receive god's peace joyfully we need to receive receive god's love 
joyfully. We need to receive his grace joyfully. We need to re receive the new life that he offers joyfully. Let's receive all that God has for us joyfully, not walking around mad and upset and angry. Oh, I got to read my Bible. Oh, I got to do this. I got to let's receive it joyfully. The joy of the Lord is our strength. He received him joyfully. He put himself in a position to get a better view of Jesus. As a result, he got Jesus' attention. And as a result, they got him closer to Jesus. And as a result, Jesus drew near to him. Jesus said, tonight, I'm going to come dine with you. He said, I must abide at your house tonight. That's what it is. He wants to abide with us. That's the Holy Spirit, the presence of Jesus. And he received him joyfully. It's so much we can learn from Zacchaeus. It's so much we can learn from putting ourselves in a better position to get a better view of Jesus. That's what the title of the message is, getting a better view of Jesus. Luke chapter 19, verses 1 through 10. Please read it when you get a chance. There's a lot of nuggets in there. Now look at verse 7. At, at, you'll find this all the time with, with self-righteous Christians and self-righteous non-believers. Look at verse seven. And when they saw it, this is the self-righteous people. When they saw it, they all murmured, saying that he was gone to be with a man that is a sinner. Talking about Jesus, right? They like he going to go hang out with a sinner. We see how re religious people and self-righteous people constantly fought against Jesus. Jesus wanted relationship with those that nobody wanted to be around. That's why when you shun, shun people that, that's not popular, when you only want to be around popular people, that's a self-righteous spirit. When you're trying to be popular and you want all you want to be around people that's popular, and that's why this whole movement of um, self-fame and riches and money. And, and, and uh, I want to call it, they say greatness. That's what they call it. But it's not greatness. It's pride. When you want to move with those that you think is going somewhere, oh, I hang out with a bunch of business owners. I only hang out with this kind of group. I hang out, I only hang out with that kind of group. You ain't going nowhere in life. Oh, man, I ain't, you know what I mean? That kind of stuff. People got to be on a certain level for you, for them to get your attention. But Jesus Christ says, no, I want to be with you tonight, Zacchaeus. The person that nobody wanted to be around. This is the heart of Jesus. This is the spirit, the mind, the love of Jesus. We don't know this love yet. That's why we need a better view of Jesus. Zacchaeus climbed in that tree to get a better view of Jesus. The church needs a better view of Jesus. We want a better view of politics. We want a better view of money. We want a better view of of business. We want a better view of all of these things, but we're not getting a better view of Jesus, the heart of Jesus. Jesus loves the lowly. Look what the religious people said. They said, oh, he's going to hang out with a sinner. Jesus wanted to be around those that nobody wanted to be around. Now, two things, two things that self-righteous people do, two things. And this is a constant thing that they do. Number one, they point out how bad others are. That's the first thing they do. They always point out how bad others are. You see what they said in verse 7? He's going to hang out with a sinner. That's what self-righteous people do. They always point out how bad others are. Like the publican in the temple. I, I fast twice a week. I pay tithes of everything I got. I do this. I thank you, God. I'm not like this publican. I'm not like the sinner. I'm not like this person. I'm not like that person. They always point out how bad others are. And the second thing they do is they always point out how good they are. That's what the publican did in Luke chapter 18 when Jesus gave the, par gave the parable about the publican and the sinner. He pointed out how bad the publican was and he pointed out how good he was. That's the mindset of, of, of self-righteous people. And the self-righteous people, that's why when you go out and preach, you can't be thinking people are going to change right away. You can't be thinking people are going to 
get transformed right away. You can't be thinking people going to respond to the word right away. One plant, one water, but God gives the increase. Self-righteous people, they expect people to change before encountering Jesus Christ. They expect people to change before encountering Jesus Christ. However, it's the exact opposite. The individual encounters Jesus and then and then change takes place. And then change. Look at verse eight. Verse eight. This is after an encounter with Jesus, after Zacchaeus encountered Jesus. Verse eight. And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord. Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I and if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him for full. That's the conviction of sin. That's the change of heart that comes from encountering Jesus. Self-righteous people expect people because they, they have a critical spirit. Self-righteous people and people with a critical spirit expect people to change before they come to God. You better get it together. You better get it together. They expect, really expect people to clean themselves up before encountering Jesus Christ. You, you better get it together or God is going to get you or you're going to do this. You better fix it. If we could all fix ourselves, what would, what would we need Jesus for? We need God. We need to encounter God first. God changes us. Zacchaeus was changed after his transfer, after his encounter with Jesus. He got a better view of Jesus. He put himself in a position to get closer to Jesus. And as a result, Jesus got closer to him. Jesus said, tonight, I must dine with you. But had he not put himself in that position to get a better view of Jesus, Jesus would not have dined with him that night. We need a better view of Jesus. Look at verse 9 through 10 and then we're done. And Jesus said unto him, this day is salvation come to this house. For as much as he also is a son of Abraham, for the son of man is come to seek and to save that which is lost. This speaks of Zacchaeus's conversion and new birth as it was then, right? His encounter with Jesus Christ, so this, so to speak, right? I'm not saying that he was filled with the Holy Ghost, but as far as his his encounter with Jesus Christ, it was a type of a conversion. It was a type of a new birth, and we see it in the fact that Zacchaeus had conviction of his sin. He says, "Lord, if I've stole from any man, I, I'll return him fourfold, and I'm, I'm going to give all half. I'm going to give half of my goods to the poor." That was his conviction as a result of him having an encounter with Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ goes on to say, "For so much as he also is a son of Abraham, Zacchaeus was a Jew, as were all of these holier than." thou critics the self-righteous people right they would have let him perish without even turning a hand to save him but jesus christ says i come to seek and to save that which was lost which were lost which was lost so he naturally went to where the sinners were jesus naturally went and mingled with sinners jesus went to call those people that nobody wanted nothing to do with. Jesus Christ, that's what Jesus does. He is a spirit. He's a spirit of love and, and grace and humility. Jesus Christ reaches out to the lowliest of lowly. Listen, I don't know about you, but I was at my lowest state when God found me. God found me. He said, you didn't choose me. I chose you. I got saved in prison. I got saved in 1996 in state prison in a lonely cell. Jesus Christ saved me. The world may have given up on me, but Jesus saved me. There are people right now that the world have given up on, but Jesus wants them. And we are his hands and we are his feet. And we can't be self-righteous and say, I'm not going to deal with that person. Look at them. They messed up. They strung out on drugs. They on coke. They on heroin. They done stole. They done robbed. They done murdered. I'm not going around that. These are the very same people that Jesus Christ walked among. These are the very same people that washed his feet with their tears. These are the very same people that he sat down and ate with. These are the very same people that Jesus Christ touched, Jesus Christ hugged, and we are his hands and feet, and we got to go out and go after those same people and not have that self-righteous, haughty spirit. 
but we got to get a better view of Jesus first. The church is so distracted by politics, money, the here and now. We need a better view of Jesus. Zacchaeus climbed that tree. Yeah, he was short. Yeah, he had, he had obstacles. Yes, the crowd was around him. He couldn't see Jesus. He had to climb in a sycamore tree to get a better view of Jesus. I don't care what you got to climb. What obstacles are in your life that's stopping you from getting a better view of Jesus? You better climb that sycamore tree and get a better view of Jesus and put yourself in line with the direction that Jesus Christ is going. The Bible says that Zacchaeus went before. He saw, he heard the commotion. He heard, he heard the direction that Jesus Christ was coming in. And Zacchaeus strategically put himself in the direction that Jesus Christ was coming and got up in that tree and Jesus looked up and saw him. Put yourself in the direction that Jesus Christ is going put yourself in that direction get a better view of jesus and once you get a better view of jesus he will draw near to you the bible says draw near to god and he will draw near to you that's why he says zacchaeus tonight i must dine with you glory to jesus let's pray father in the name of jesus christ i pray that we all get a better view of jesus i pray lord that we will set aside our busy schedules, Lord, that we would make time to fellowship with you, to labor in the word, to labor in prayer, those spiritual disciplines. And as we spiritually discipline ourselves, Lord, let us exhibit spiritual maturity, showing the character of Christ in tough situations, showing the character of Christ when our emotions are raging, showing the character of Christ when we want to be right, when we want to walk in pride, showing the character of Christ, living like Jesus Christ in times of trouble, times of famine, times of trials. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Lord, we need a better view of Jesus. We need to see him, Lord. We need to get close to him, Lord. We need to dine with him, Lord. We need to receive him joyfully daily. Lord, give us a soft heart, Lord that we may receive Jesus daily, that we may get a better view, that we may dine with him, that we may become more like him, Lord. To win the loss to your kingdom, God. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we ask for forgiveness of sins, thought, word, deed, Lord, all of our shortcomings, we lay it down at the foot of the cross, Lord. We have an advocate with the Father, Lord. I pray for the body of Christ, Lord, that we will grow that we wouldn't make no excuses for our obstacles, but that we would climb up into that sycamore tree to get a better view of Jesus. Father, in Jesus Christ's name, I pray. Amen. God bless, bless you guys. I uh, hope you've enjoyed the Bible study. Again, we will try our best to come on every Tuesday. If you want to listen to this message again or download it to your devices, go to podbean.com slash Pastor Ron Wright and subscribe to our podcast for free and you can download this message. And also this podcast will be on our YouTube channel, Pastor Ron Wright or Abiding in Christ Ministries. We are on Facebook also, Ron Wright. We are on TikTok, Pastor Ron Wright. We are on Instagram, Pastor Ron Wright. Please guys, whatever you do, whatever you got to climb, whatever hurdles you got to jump, get a better view of Jesus Christ. God bless you guys. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. And also real quick, the prayer line, I'll post the prayer line. I don't, I can't even remember the prayer line. I'll post it on uh, all of those platforms. We have a 24 hour prayer line. You got it, baby. I'm going to give out the numbers to our 24 hour prayer line. It is 267-384-3145. 267-384-3145. You can text your prayers in anonymously or you can tell us your name. Pray for us as well. We all need prayer. We are we get attacked. You know, obstacles obstacles come our way. We are all in this together. Please pray for us. Text your prayers in 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And we will lay before the Lord with your prayers and I'll intercede for you as you intercede for us. 
And also, we are in the Philadelphia area. If you are in Philly, we go out and we preach the gospel. We give out food and we'll start, we'll start giving out clothes in the colder months starting September. If you want to bring your clothes to the outreach, the clothes that you don't use, please bring them to us. And also, if you want to be a part of the street ministry, text that number. Text that number and let us know that you want to come out with us and help us on the streets of Philadelphia. The church is built from the outside and we're not about building our kingdom. We're not about build, making our name great. We're not about building our ministry. We're not about uh, having disciples under us. We're not about having people follow us. We're about building God's kingdom, glorifying Jesus Christ, teaching his church and pointing Christians to Jesus Christ for the work of the ministry, for edifying of the body of Christ, for the perfecting of the saints. God bless you guys. Have a wonderful evening. We love you.